Now at last, mind was dawning, raised between sun and earth. And in that dawn of mind, sunrise and sunset, if not the sun itself, seem likely to have been among the first things to have been named by the first men. Even such a being as Olduvai Man, one of the earliest known hominids, must always have been very much aware of the passage of the sun across the gorge where he lived. He may conceivably even have used the lip stretched over his ape-like snout to frame sound to express its coming and going. If so, then here already was a step in creation through Lagos, the separation of day and night. Those are the words of the archaeologist Jaquetta Hawks, describing what she believed to be our species' original sentient encounter with the sky. Now this has been a preoccupation of ours ever since, and it has affected how we organize ourselves, our society, our culture, even our politics. At least that is the thesis of Dr. Nicholas Campion, who has argued persuasively in my view that developments in human political structures naturally follow from developments in our uh, formulation of the cosmos. Campion argues that politics follows from astronomy, and while I'm not 100% prepared to accept that thesis, I can concur that the two certainly appear to be linked. The French philosopher Bruno Latour put it, No one has ever heard of a collective that did not mobilize heaven and earth in its composition, along with bodies and souls, property and law, gods and ancestors, powers and beliefs, beasts and fictional beings. Such is the ancient anthropological matrix, the one we have never abandoned. You know, simply put, our conceptions of the universe have, uh, from our very beginnings as a social animal, affected our concepts of society and politics. You know, some would argue, uh, Latour and uh, Campion among them, that we uh, still do. Let's start near the beginning of human history. In the city of Lagash, located in the Fertile Crescent around 2000 BCE, we find the dream of Gudea, in which the goddess Nanshe and Sin, the moon god, measure heaven and earth as a means to promote better agriculture, obviously a major concern in ancient times. Of course, a couple of thousand years later, we have the first Roman Emperor Augustus, claiming that the comet visible in the sky in 44 BCE means that he is the guy who should be in charge. No, really, the sky says so. And from the 3rd century AD on, we find increasingly a focus on the sun as a center of imperial religion. Let's fast forward another millennia and some change. My dude Copernicus is suddenly arguing that, whoa, the sun is the center of the universe. Now this has some major implications, one of which is what has been called political Copernicism. To wit, if the sun is the center of the cosmos, then that serves to follow that the king is also the center of the political cosmos and is to be obeyed without question. This helps reinforce an uptick in authoritarian monarchism at the time. That is until my dude Isaac Newton comes strong with a series of universal natural laws that apply to everything. With every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, no matter what. Big, small, weak, strong, his laws stand true for every motion in the universe. Lo and behold, after this, we find the Enlightenment, where people like John Locke, who was a good friend of Newton's, develop the ideas that all people have the same natural rights. Uh, I don't think I need to really clarify the connection between those two things. All natural laws apply to everything. All political laws apply to all people, right? So the, these are ideas which we still ostensibly live under today. Moving into the 20th century, it has been argued that the development of relativity and quantum mechanics resulted in the political instability of the early 20th century. For if the universe itself is relative, so too must necessarily be morality and human rights in the eyes of some. Still later in the century, the pictures taken by the Apollo astronauts of the Earth from afar seem to have enhanced the idea of a global village, devoid of racial or cultural divisions. Look, the overall point is this. You know, we believe we are so rational so uh, scientific now, but some, like Bruno Latour, would suggest that there is a long-term continuity among political leaders and thinkers in applying what was, at the time, a modern cosmological model 
to our ideas of the state. You know, who knows what they'll say about us thousands of years from now, while we think we're so perfectly logical and rational. Agree? Disagree? Think I'm a moron? Think I'm a genius? Let me know in the comments, and I'll try to respond. Anyways, that's it for now. Till next time, for Long History Short, this is your world-renowned historian. Be good, kiddos. I'm out.